Oh, welcome everyone. So welcome to this session. Um, yeah, I hope this session will excite you. Um, our first speaker in this session is Professor Xiao Huazhou. Uh, although everyone here uh, knows Professor Zhou, let me just say a few words about him. So Professor Zhou is a Boya chair, chair professor and the uh, chair of the Department of Biostatistics at Peking University. He joined the Peking University in 2018. And uh, before that, he was a full professor at the University of Washington. And he had been well known for his contributions uh, in dealing with uh, important real um, uh, problems in biostatistics and healthcare uh, from the causal inference perspective. He's a fellow of the American Association, uh, American Statistical Association, and a fellow of American Association for Advancement of Science. And he received a number of other awards. Um, and uh, uh, actually, more importantly, um, he is the founder of this uh, conference. So basically, now this uh, Pacific Causal Inference Conference had, be, had been um, a yearly platform for researchers, causality researchers all over the world to share this set of art, um, communicate, uh, communicate with, with each other, and uh, find uh, collaboration opportunities. So it, it's a very important conference right now. And uh, actually, it was founded very uh, time in a very timely manner. Thank you very much, Professor Joe, for that. So now it's your stage. Okay, thank you, Kwong, uh, for the nice introduction. Okay, so let me uh, so uh, let me see. Let me share my slides. Okay, okay. Two, four, four screen. Quinn, can you see my whole uh, whole screen? Four yes, screen? I work, yes, it oh, works well. Okay, great, thank you. Quinn uh, for the introduction. And so here I would like to share some uh, latest uh, results we have uh, obtained uh, with my uh, um, with my PhD student, uh, Deng Yuhao, and also a, a collaborator at uh, Beijing University uh, People's Hospital. So let me start with a multi example. Actually, the previous speaker has uh, nicely uh, uh, say the stage for my talk is uh, how do you do causal inference in observational study? But here we have additional complication in addition to observational data. So let me start with motivating example. Uh, for me as a, as, as a biostatistician, so my statistical research is always like to motivate with a real example. So that means uh, I like that way to, to start with real example and, uh, and then uh, abstract the statistical problem from real example and then try to solve it and then try to Replay back to that example. So here, example. That's the example I've been working with uh, a physician at the uh, Peking University People's Hospital. So uh, in Peking uh, University People's Hospital, so they are doing a, a stem uh, transplantation, a stem cell transplantation. As we know, that uh, the treatment uh, is the best to treat acute uh, leukemia, uh, lymphoblastic leukemia, uh, including the human look side antigen. So there are two ways to do that trans transplantation. One is using, they call the human look side antigen matched sibling donor transplantation. So let's abbreviate uh, as a MSDA. Uh, so that means that there's a full match. Uh, uh, so the other one is a uh, haploid identical uh, stem cell transplantation from the family. So let's delay uh, deloaded de uh, HAPLASCT. So why is means the donor have to come from your uh, sister or your uh, parents, uh, particular parents, and uh, immediate sister. So the last one is a half actually match come 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 from the family like half half brother or half sister. So the question is uh, which transplantation type is better than. Uh, better to, to achieve the better uh, outcome. Historically, the MSTA, which is fully matched, uh, is the first choice. Right? But since, uh, since uh, in the real, real world, sometimes it's hard to find the full match. So you can only find the half match. So question is, if we do receive half match, do you, can you uh, re, uh, achieve a competitive outcome? in terms of the leukemia relapse compared with uh, fully matched uh, by properly adjusting for uh, the on-relapse mortality. 
So, so issue here, the clinical issue here is if you, there are two groups, one receive fully matched donor, one receive only half matched donor. So they both receive transplantations. So in these two groups, which one has the higher, lower rate of the relapse? Uh, but you have one problem. Before the patient reach, uh, reach the relapse event, they might die. So we call the long relapse mortality. So you're not able to observe the people, uh, whether they have been relapsed, if they die before the event. So there are two problems. One is observational nature, because we can't force people. So like in this example, it's hard to imagine you do a randomized trial. <laughs> if the patient come in, you say, I'm going to randomize you to fully matched or half matched, because that, there are two problems. One is the ethical. One is not practical. If you match to 40, if you sign to 40 match group, but there's no 40 match donor, so you can't do it. Uh, so this one example, whether you can do randomized trial period, either due to the ethical issue or the practical issues. So there you stuck with observational data. And so, and then that's a one problem. So we have our major confounders. Second problem is you have people who die before reach the uh, event of a relapse event. Okay. So, so this has a problem we call the truncation by death. So this actually occur very often in non genome data uh, because in the non genome data for the long-term follow-up cohort, you may uh, encounter death before they reach in the, uh, the outcome such as relapse of the cancer or relapse of the leukemia. Uh, if you have the problem of the truncation by death, we call truncation by death, then that problem actually is different from sensory problem. So since so some people actually treated truncation by death events as a sensory because you can't observe anything after death. Uh, but we think that problem is not sensory problem because sensory problem actually refer to the outcome, to return to the event, whether the outcome still exists down the road, but just masked by loss of follow-up. So it's more loss of the follow-up. But if you uh, truncation by death actually render the outcome undefined. So if you die, then the relapse will never occur. Uh, so that's a little bit different. Uh, so, the, so we have to use a different uh, approach as the approach uh, commonly used in survival analysis. So let me introduce some notations. So suppose we have a covariance X at the baseline and we have a binary treatment Z. And then here, actually, the survival status, let's say survival status within a certain time period, let's say from uh, zero to two years. So in, within two years, we have a, a survival status. So survival status is actually the post-treatment variable because this only observed after a patient received treatment. So that's why we have a small z here. So we, have, we call the S small z. So S small z equal to one if the patient survived in this uh, certain time interval of interest. And S0, you put S, uh, S equal to zero if the patient died. And similarly, you have a lot of post-treatment Y, potential outcome. So S is the potential outcome. And then Y also is a potential outcome of your interest. So YZ, it, here have, a, have a complications. So YZ is only well-defined when S is equal to one. So only if you survive uh, at the end of a study, then you can observe whether what is the outcome for that patient. So if you die before you are able to observe the outcome, we call this variable undefined. So there's no value. So we call the star here. So in this setup, we also soon a sort of assumption on consistency. So we will not deal with the interference here. So in our, uh, I, will, I will discuss in a few minutes that we have a major confounders. The, the, you need additional information beyond what you observe here. So uh, one is instrumental variable, or you can, another one is substitution variable or proxy variables. So, so here we are, go beyond the instrumental variables. So we use a substitution variable. So the V is a substitution variable, which in, in a sense is actually a proxy of S0, S1. So the substitution var variable is some variable you observe, and can be used as a proxy variable to the potential outcome S0, S1. 
So based on S0, S1, we can divide the population into four different groups. So that one we call the principal stratification. So that's the concept was proposed by Ruben and uh, uh, Frank Karkas. Uh, so, uh, so that's in general uh, principal stratification, but for the survival analysis, or for we have a survival case, they have a different meanings. So we're gonna divide the population into three different population, depend on the value of S0, S1. So you can have one, 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 zero, zero, one, or zero, zero. So, and then uh, we'll call the combination of S0, S1 by G, by G. So G takes three different value, has different meaning. So first one we call the LL group. So L, we call them always survivors. So that means regardless uh, which treatment patient receive, they're going to alive at the end of at, at the end of this uh, uh, study when when they apply when they, when they're ready to observe the outcome. So it's called the always survivor. So that's actually good. This group because in that group both y zero y uh, y uh, y one are observed, and the other group is called the LD group, which we call the protected group. Why? Because if you give the treatment, they survive. If you give the control, they die. So the actual treatment has a protected uh, outcome. So that's a good outcome. But unfortunately in that group, Y0 is, on is, is not defined, even Y1 is defined. So the third group is a DL group. We call the harm group. That means if you give a new treatment, they die. If you get the control, they don't die, they, they live. So actually the, the treatment do more harm than the good. So this actually is a bad, a bad treatment. In that group, you're also missing Y0. Uh, also, Y1 is, un, is undefined. So the last group we call the doom group, the DOD group. So that means they're gonna die. Regardless, you give a treatment, get control. So for this group, there's no hope. So you don't need to give the treatment. So they are gonna die regardless what you have. Uh, so you can see that in this kind of setup, the commonly assumed monotonicity, which is a required assumption for intermittent variable doesn't hold. So we have uh, this kind of problem. The intermittent variable is not usable in our case. So we have to use a different kind of the tool to solve this problem. Um, uh, if, we, if we don't believe DL group uh, exists, but sometimes the DL group does exist, okay. Uh, but, but in some, in some cases, they, 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 uh, they does, uh, does not exist. So if we do not make the assumption, the DL group exists, mm -hmm. so we can make an instrumental variable. So in that case, actually instrumental variable also okay to use. Uh, so DL group is a harm group. So that's a kind of the tricky, I mean, whether you allow this assumption whole or not, because the harm group means the treatment do worse than the control. So I think in practice, probably this assumption probably doesn't hold, okay. So in our approach, we will not make the assumptions, the monotonistic assumptions. Uh, so, uh, in our uh, uh, setup, so you can see in our setup, only group which you can talk about, talk about the treatment versus control causal effect is this always survivor group. For the rest of them, you are, have one variable is undefined. So we're going to be only interested in survivor average causal effect. Uh, so, but in our example here, I, I'm going to argue, uh, you can only actually estimate control group. Uh, so in other words, what I want to estimate is if you do not uh, uh, use uh, transplantation, if you, in, if you only use half, uh, half matched donor, well, corresponding uh, different treatment while doing, while do, will have a similar cause effect now. So we want to estimate this uh, because the, uh, the Survivor average is not identifiable. So that's a little bit different from the traditional uh, truncation by death uh, in our case, because we have the observational data. So if you have, if you have a randomized trial, then you can, you do can estimate sur the survivor only average cause effect. So let me just quickly review what uh, work has been done. So, the, uh, so one work is a, assuming some parametric model between S and Y, so they're assuming how the S impact Y, then you can solve this problem. The second approach is to the bound, because like I said, 
this parameter or the parameter of get, get rid of Z are not uh, identifiable even with a randomized trial. So, so there's some work done, uh, use the bound so they can build the bound and then do the sensitivity analysis. Uh, so that's the first approach. But first three approach actually does not give you a definite answers. So I think the better approach actually to invoke, uh, use additional information, including instrumental, uh, instrumental variable like variables. But here we don't call that, we call the substitution variable because, uh, because sometimes uh, the monotonicity assumption may not be hold. If you have a monotonicity assumptions, then you may be able to uh, 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 consider using instrumental variable idea. So here uh, you can use the post-treatment color rate or the substitution variable. Uh, so this, uh, including the charging, charging done some work and some work, uh, uh, Ding Pong and I and uh, Gen Zi and also uh, Lin Bo Wang and I uh, and uh, Re Thomas Richardson. Uh, so when the team, uh, Lin Bo did the poster with me at the University of Washington. Okay, so uh, all uh, existing, pre-existing approach uh, require randomized trial or ignorability uh, treatment assumption. So in other words, uh, so, so they ass they're assuming no common causes of survivor, survive and outcome variables. And all, uh, 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 that's one approach. So, but they still require a randomized trial. So the second approach I just mentioned before is it does not require uh, no common causes of survival and outcome. So that means there are some variable which uh, can influence survive and outcome, and but they still require randomized trial. Okay. However, as I mentioned in my example, so randomized trial may not be very practical uh, as in my example here. So you may have to use observ observational data so if you have a round, uh, observational data, then, uh, uh, then you are running into a bigger problem of the identifiability issues. So, so in this paper, we're gonna talk about how we can uh, uh, deal with the truncation by death in observational data where you have unmeasured confounders. So one of the, why the, is more challenged uh, to do causal inference with uh, our major confounder uh, with truncation by death. One right reason is if you uh, do not have a randomized trial, you have observational data, uh, then uh, the, the conditional proportion of each strata, uh, principal strata is not identifiable basically. So this one is not even given the co observed covariance. So, that, so that's a big issue when you have a major confounder with uh, truncation by death. So we'll try to deal with that. So we actually have a look at this uh, problem and then we make following assumptions to identify the parameter of interest. And then I will explain those assumptions. So I think the in causal inference, uh, one of the important uh, uh, part which distinguish causal inference from other statistical analysis is that we cannot make causal inference with observed data we have to make some untestable assumptions and in order to do the causal inference. Uh, so, so, uh, so whether you make good assumption, that will distinguish your message from bad message. So whether a causal inference message is good or bad is depend on assumption you make, which is by the way, some are not testable based on observed data is reasonable from real practice. So here we make some assumptions. So first assumption we make is latent ignorability. So we can't assume ignorability anymore because we are not randomized trial. So we can, we, but we're assuming conditioning on principal strata. Principal strata is unobservable. So that's unobservable. If you condition on principal strata LL, then the treatment assignment and potential outcome is ignorable. Also condition on other observed covariates. So, yeah. So basically they just say, the principal strata, which is a latent uh, variable, can inference treatment assignment. So treatment assignment actually could relate to principal strata. Uh, treatment as, uh, the principal strata can also inference potential outcome. So, that, so, so that's uh, one first assumption. Second assumption, we make a more system, but on the S, on the S. So we're assuming the treatment are always doing better in terms of control. We're saying that one, 
might be reasonable to say the new treatment while doing better job than the control group. And then also assume positivity for all the observed uh, confounders. So this assumption say that in the treatment group, a control group, everyone has a chance to receive the, the uh, uh, in the always taken group, always, everybody has a chance to receive treatment. But here, we do not need to ask the glorability. So that's different from the previous uh, papers. So this assumption, we don't, this assumption is assuming uh, conditional X, the treatment assignment is also, also independent of the survival. But here we do not make the assumptions. Yes. But however, if you don't have the assumptions, we got problem. So we, we cannot distinguish between LL, LD group because uh, there, is a, there is a mixture distribution in LD, L, uh, LL, LD group in treated group. So in that group, we, even with the monotonous assumption, we cannot distinguish uh, in the treatment group, which one is LL, which one is LD. Because if you assign to the treatment group, you can be either LL or either LD. So in order to dis distangle those two uh, latent variables, uh, we have to make additional assumptions about substituting variable. So we need to have a substituting variable to proxy what S0 would be. So in the, in the treatment group, S1 is observed, but S0 is, not, is unobserved. So in order to have some information about that, we need to have observed data, we call the substitution variable, which is following, following assumptions. So the three assumptions, this substitution variable, uh, well, we need, need, to have, need to hold. So we don't need to have strong exclusion restriction, but you need to satisfy those three assumptions. <clears throat> Why is substitution relevant? Uh, so this just say the substitution variable is relevant to my potential outcome S0, given Z equal to one, given S1 equal to one, given X. So that's called the substitution relevant. So the substitution variable have to be uh, some proxy to S0, so that's basically said. So second assumption is long differential substitutions. So, so if you conditioning on the proxy variable you have, actually remember the goal of S is proxy S0. So if you condition on S0, you go to zero, then the V and the S1 is independent. So in, in other words, V has no information about S1. If you know what S0 is, so basically, they, they, this assumption is actually important. This just say the substitution variable have to be very specific to S0. You can't be substitution variable for S1, okay? So, and then there's a uh, non-interaction uh, assumptions. So basically assume the, there's some interaction, uh, non-interaction between G and V, okay? So if you actually have this additive model, then the non-interaction assumption hold. Okay, so basically, uh, those, those assumptions actually, yeah, just to explain those assumptions, okay. So next, I will going to uh, discuss how we can use those uh, uh, six assumptions to identify my parameters. So as, as we know, in statistics, uh, uh, we, we call a, a parameter of interest is identifiable if the parameter can be written as the distribution function of observed data, okay. So if you can write as observed data joint distribution function, then this parameter identifiable. So, so first let's write down what observed data uh, distribution look like, okay? So first one is uh, we call the propensity score. So that's us, because these can be observed V and uh, S. So observed data consists of Z, V, S, uh, X, S, and uh, Y. So, so we can write this joint distribution in followings, okay? So Y is a propensity score. So the probability of the Z equal to one given the, uh, given the covariates uh, V and the X, given covariate V. Okay, I have to go a little bit faster, okay? And uh, also there's a, another one is a probability of survivors and the probability outcome. So those so, uh, U pi V is observable, okay? And then pi G is unobservable because they depend on the principal strata. Okay, so we can show in this theory that under our assumption A to one, the, the parameter of interest, the causal parameter, survival average cause effect on treated group can be written as the expected value of, of, uh, of the, uh, some random variable of observed data. So with this uh, equation, so we show 
the the primary interest in, is uh, is observable. So the advantage of this equation is that they also actually motivate us to estimate the primary of interest. So there are two methods. So one is based on first equation, one is based on second equation. So first equation tell us we can do regression. M1 is regression. You, if you do the weighted regression, we can estimate the LLC. So second approach actually, we can use augmented inverse probability weighting. So we propose two methods. Okay, uh, due to the time, actually I have to go fast. <laughs> okay, so, so we're gonna propose two methods to estimate those. Okay, so here's the two methods. And then, so the two methods also is based on the, uh, the model we propose here. So this model, this model. So this model, you already have to, uh, is unknown. So you have to model that. So there's some parameter, we call this the Nielsen parameter. So if you, if this model known, then you can have an Oracle uh, estimator, but you already, that's not impossible. So this is called the Oracle uh, uh, estimator. If you assume those models are known, so the other one is uh, is uh, is uh, on Oracle uh, prop uh, is uh, is estimate the nuisance parameter. So you have a two two parameters delta c and delta hat. Okay, and then so so next theory I want to go into cell. So we just saw our estimator actually with Oracle very similar. So we, we can achieve similar efficiency as the Oracle estimators. Our estimators. Okay, okay. So I skipped, and then also we have lots of property. Our estimator has a double robust. So either regression model is right or the propensity is right, our message will be right. Okay, so I will not give you the detail. So, so next I want to show you the simulation study and then the example, uh, I try to finish uh, on time. Uh, so, so we're going to simulate different data set and satisfy my assumption A1 and A6. And, uh, and then I compare different problems. So I set up, I have different settings. Setting one means a constant effect. Setting two is ignorability. So that means previous message is okay. Setting three is, 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 is not ignorability, doesn't hold, but there's a special type of uh, uh, long ignorability. So uh, setting four is heterogeneous treatment fact with uh, exclusion restrictions. So you can see based on results. So this one, middle one uh, is our approach and uh, uh, other, uh, oh, sorry. So, so let's, uh, last two, first two are uh, previous approach. Uh, so our approach is last two, last two. So you can see that our approach is always has a smaller bias and a smaller mean square error, regardless whether uh, you violate ignorability or not ignorability. So, so to, to just to summarize, our proposed uh, augmented uh, P, uh, IPW is asymptotic unbiased. Uh, if the if the assumption one to six hold, uh, even is one of the important assumption called long differential substitutions violate our uh, simulation show they have a don't have a big impact. Okay, so I will uh, show you how if I apply this message to this real data set and then to the what the results will look like. Okay, so we apply this results. So one of the difficulty in application is how to, how to show substitution variable. So that's a crucial for our message. So this have to talk to the physicians because the physician have tell you the medical, medical knowledge. So we turned out uh, this actually is a, has a 1000 uh, observation. So substitution variable we choose is this. We choose actually, uh, uh, let's see which one we choose. Okay. Uh, so we choose actually the, uh, uh, the, uh, the substitution variable we choose is, uh, uh, the age uh, since uh, uh, age at the surgery. So the age we choose as a, as a substitution variable. Why? Because it turned out uh, based on uh, clinical knowledge, the older people has higher probability of our lung relapse mortality because older people are more vulnerable to infection after surgery. So that means our substitution relevant is true. And also uh, uh, the age, actually is not considered a risk factor of relapse based on clinical evidence. So that means the age has not direct effect on why, okay. And second is there's also, we can show there's no interaction turn there, okay. So that means uh, our assumption in this example, substitution variable are uh, okay. So we apply our methods and then to it. And then, so this is our, our uh, last two, our new methods. And the uh, first one is you get rid of all the people who died do analysis or the 
or the previous approach. You can see that the with the new methods are a fact uh, uh, the uh, is 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 uh, is uh, higher than that. But the all uh, the all are pointing to the uh, zero containing the interval. So interpretation is actually the half matched donor uh, or ha a forty matched donor. The outcome is similar. So that means it's okay to receive half matched donor. Okay. Similar, we would do the sensitive analysis, and it's not very sensitive. Okay. Okay. So that will include our results. Uh, so we propose a, a, a message to deal with observational data uh, with a major confounder when uh, some people are die uh, before the treatment, which is truncation by death. Uh, and then our show our new approach uh, has a has a double robust property and also uh, robust to the model specifications. So I want to thank actually uh, 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 Liu at Beijing University for uh, discussion and Dr. Uh, 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 Cao at the Peking University People's Hospital and then a lot of support from National Science Foundation of China. Okay, thank you. Quinn? Great, yeah, great. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Zhou. So uh, yeah, we have time for a quick question or for one or two quick questions. So you can just raise your hand or you can just put the questions in the chat box. Uh, while we are waiting, I have a quick one, uh, Professor Joe. So mm -hmm. did you really find that the monotonicity assumption is not valid? Uh, according to my experience, sometimes right, uh, the operation could have a kind of bad effect on some of the patients. So I'm wondering whether you, you, uh, I, you, uh, you, you basically avoid that assumption. So I'm wondering whether you have any um, uh, findings regarding whether uh, so the monotonicity assumption is not valid. So in this case, is uh, is valid, I mm -hmm. think, because uh, th in this case, uh, uh, the treatment here we consider the uh, fully matched. So based on previous uh, uh, research, fully matched actually is better than the half matched. So half matched see. is a kind of control. So in this, in my example, more is more than this is only. For motivation for the S is okay, but not for the Y. Why we don't know. For the S is more mm -hmm. So the more well, mortality already... is lower uh, with the 40 match. But for the for the relapse, we we don't know. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Um yes, kind of is really a very I think it's a very basic scientific problem, right? Uh, because sometimes the operation could have uh, effect a bad effect on some of the patients. Uh, great. So now, okay, actually, we are uh, slightly late. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Joe.